Hi folks, thanks for joining us today on this beautiful sunny morning. Uh, we have a we have for you a video tour of a 2000 Forest River Cardinal 37 foot triple slide and triple axle. Okay, let's go in and give you the interior tour. When you walk in, you're greeted by oak laminate flooring. It's in very good condition. In fact, I didn't do much walking on this. I went ahead and installed a runner on it and cut it in even around the floor register. I wanted to keep the floor in, in as good a shape as possible. Okay, over here you've got a 12 volt panel with three switches. On the right here is gonna be your star, what I would call the starboard side of the unit there. There's an exterior light mounted high on the unit to illuminate around the coach at night. This center switch here activates the lights in the living area and the rear of the coach. And they're all on independent switches at the source, so you can customize your light plan when you enter the coach in the evening hours. Okay, and then on the left here is going to be the porch light. That's a porch light, amber light that will turn on at the entry door here. It minimizes your bug collection. The switch here in the center is one switch for all three slides. I will operate them now if you like. They are sequential. Starts with the bedroom slide. And once the bedroom slide bottoms out, the dinette slide will start coming in. As well as the galley. And the galley finishes last. It did draw in a little bit. Sometimes pressure does that, but that is the last slide to come in. Okay, that's what the coach looks like with the slides all in. Okay, I just wanted a, de a video demo of it, so if uh, for whatever reason there's no shore power on the unit when you come to look, you know that these slide outs run and oper operate fine. Let's punch them back out. Bedroom slide. Dinette slide. And the galley slide. Folks, this is one hydro pump unit. One switch, and again, it operates all three rooms instead of having three separate switches, okay? Uh, there's no problems, there's no hang-ups. In fact, when I bought the unit, I didn't want to take any chances, and the, 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 lot, the dealer that I bought this from, he went ahead and replaced the power unit just uh, just as a precautionary so because I told him that was a big concern of mine when a coach gets uh, you know anywhere five six years or older uh, sometimes a slide operation is uh, is an issue so as a fresh pump unit it's about a year and a half old okay and here we have a switch residential switch for our residential ceiling fan and light kit uh, I added that light kit that came with four 40 watt incandescents. They were very hot to the touch. They even made the sconces hot to the touch. Uh, that's extra heat inside an RV you don't need in the summer, summer weather, uh, recreational time of year when you're using this. So we put uh, four 40 watt LED bulbs in there, cool to the touch, and use a lot less power, which is key when you're uh, when you're on anybody's uh, power supply at a campground. Okay, when you first walk in, you're gonna notice, obviously, the uh, floor to ceiling closet. Very generous coat closet here. It's deep. Keep your supplies or equipment in there. You wanna keep dry. Stuff you don't necessarily wanna keep in the basement storage, you wanna have access to it. Here's a great shoe closet. We have a carpet piece to go, that goes in there. We took it out for cleaning. 
Okay, let me remove my shoes. And you're gonna be uh, noticing here, uh, you're not seeing things, the dinette cushions, with a simple flip of the cushions, you can have vinyl side up, or with a, another flip of the cushions, you could have fabric side up. So you got the option, if you've got young kids, or perhaps you have a messy adult, uh, whatever the case may be, you can go full vinyl, or you can go full fabric. Uh, she tended to like the floral, and uh, she was not a messy eater. I like the vinyl because, well, sometimes I, uh, I, I make crumbs. Let's just put it at that, you know, leave it at that. All right, we took the liberty of setting up four place settings here, just to show you, you could sit four here comfortably and eat. And there's windows all around on this slide. This is a 12 foot slide and approximately five, five foot. So most of us are just gonna dip our head a little bit to get into the seat, but uh, it's, it's reasonable. You got two 12 volt chandeliers here. Okay, and we've got over cab storage on props. So these will stay open when you're getting cups and spoons and plate wear out. Okay, let's say there's an Afghan or a, some extra blanket you want to keep up there. All right, I want to direct your attention to below the dinettes here. These used to be drawers. This was a drawer face. I took the, the tracks out and all the uh, drawer sides. Uh, you put stuff in the drawer, it would bind. It was not a good setup. Uh, plus, it also had the detents for, um, for in travel, which were very hard to open and close these. And these were drawers you did not want to leave partially open. So now you have full use of that cavity. It goes all the way, okay, the full width of the dinette. Before, you had probably just just about half okay same thing over here so that just pretty much maximize space for you kids can keep their toys and games in there out of the way plenty of storage i thought it was much better than the drawers what you got here is one of three pieces of a sectional these three pieces will form an l-shaped sectional which is the typical floor plan i had it as uh, the L-shaped sectional that would come up to where the fire extinguisher is, which would allow, still allow uh, good TV viewing at the entertainment center. Right now, I've broken it off into two separate love seats, basically. This is a one-piece. It is a love seat sleep sofa combo. Okay, so underneath there is a sleep sofa. That will sleep two small children or one small adult. Uh, I will say the uh, fabric on the um, support fabric on the sleep sofa at the foot end there is a spring missing and a slight tear in the fabric. Uh, my son is is a young adult and he is approximately 5'10 and 185 pounds and he slept on it with no incident so as long as you're not standing on the foot end it's not an issue and it's only supporting your feet not your full body weight. So. Again, a good sleeper for two small people or one not so small person. The dinette as well, if you drop the tabletop into the void, it's my understanding that will form a nice little sleeper for two little people or one short adult, because I believe that's about five foot uh, on end to end. So it's not, not for tall adults. Okay, let's close some of these cabinets here. All right, we've got a lot of windows in this unit, particularly on, on the starboard side. We've got day-night shades. They'll take glare off you while you're trying to watch television or read. Okay, and of course the night, night function there, give you your privacy in the evening hours. So all day-night shades with the exception of the rear here, we've got vertical blinds. And I'll offer you privacy or let in as much or as little light as you want. Down here, you got a vent window and screen. Got a little fresh air in, in the evening hours watching television. Another vent window. Okay. Day night shade as well. Nice full window. And there's your privacy. 
Okay. The cabinets overhead here as well. Two reading lights. Switch at the source. You can go one light, two lights, or off. Convenient outlet underneath the cabinet here on both sides. You got a modest sized desk here. All right, full size chair. And a cabinet below. All right, there's chocks in there, I believe, from the previous owner. I believe they made chocks so they could stilt the couch and maybe have additional storage underneath the sofa. Here we got a work surface. Okay, the kids want to do some crayon coloring or something on a rainy day. A little work, work surface for them. Or you can put your keyboard there. Decent sized workspace. So you can uh, check your emails, pay some bills while you're on, on the road and camping for the season. And of course you got your day night shade as well here. Uh, I've got an upgraded outlet here. It's a twin USB with uh, night light, which would be great for the kids if they're sleeping in the back of the coach here. And uh, it's got an electric eye or on off for the uh, night light. All right, here we have basically a work light for you. It's a high powered LED. Okay, and that can be angled to where you're working so you're not disturbing any other occupants. Uh, the thin screen TV is coming with, uh, does come with a unit. Okay. It does not fill the whole cavity, but uh, as today's TVs are running pretty much wider and shorter, not necessarily as tall. Okay, we've got a compartment here with hold open hinges. Put your DVD player in there. You can keep your remotes in there if you want. There's another one down below. You can keep your laptop in there out of, uh, out of harm's way. You could even put a lock, drill the hole, and put a lock cam lock in there if you wanted to. Keep stuff a little more secure. Down here, you get, you've got a uh, AM FM cassette, dual cassette, and I think that's a three, yes, three CD carousel changer. Uh, this works works great. A little dated, but uh, it's a decent size unit. Puts out some power back here, and you can also pipe in through the speakers up into the front of the coach there in the bedroom. There's two speakers up there. So you can have front, rear, or both. Okay, down below you've got a compartment here. Kids can put their video games in there, or electronics, headphones, okay. If you choose to make this a full-time unit or a, a longer-term long seasonal unit, you could certainly remove that AM FM unit there. You could easily put a receiver sound equipment in this void right here there's plenty of hookup space and you can pretty much gut that cabinet and put in an electric mantle fireplace that'll give you both ambiance and also zone heating in the rear of the coach here so when you're enjoying in the cool evenings you can leave the furnace off and you're not heating the whole coach in there you'll see a see the outlet which now is the uh, sound system plugged into it, but uh, you've got an outlet there that would be a good power supply for a mantle fireplace if you chose to do so. Moving on into the galley, I'm gonna point out just how big this kitchen galley is for an RV, uh, very adequate size, and you still got very generous living room space here for the kids. They, they could probably even unroll the uh, twister and play twister in here on a on a rainy day so you've got space in this unit if you got kids you got no worries okay you got a nice l-shaped galley okay we've got a residential faucet here this is metal this is not plastic rv stuff i took a plastic unit out of here and we gave it the toss okay i want to let you know i've not washed any dishes with this unit i put that put that in this season after we took the unit off off site so this is a new pull-down faucet, the sprayer, okay, and then there's a detent there so that locks in place positively. The gooseneck pivots, and also point, uh, point your direction to the, uh, or direct your attention to these uh, soap pumps. One I had uh, hand soap, the other one, of course, dish soap in here. Or you could put hand lotion in there, whatever you or her, uh, uh, prefer to have 
however you want to set it up. I did that for several reasons. Uh, you know, one, you don't want the extra extra stuff floating around on the counter that gives it a nice neater look. And two, if you're going to carry uh, dish, dish suds and hand soap, uh, those containers are going to be slopping around underneath the cabinets there as there's drawers that uh, have detents in them, but uh, there's really no seat belts for all the stuff you're going to be carrying. So that's two less items that are going to fall down, spill, and make a big soapy mess. So all you got to do is before you leave on your trip is open up this cabinet door right here. And the way I mounted it, you've got easy access to this to that reservoir for your dish soap and just an arm's reach in there and you're gonna have access to the there's no light in there right now but you're gonna have access to the other soap dispenser okay here we have one well, again that's a dual basin sink that's a 40 60 okay so we got our freezer shelves juice holder and we got a decent sized fridge. As you can see that that shelf there holds bottled water well and your condiments. This top shelf here is a little deeper so you can, uh, and I've had cartons of milk in here and cartons of juice, which are on the ready when you first open up the door, which makes grabbing a bowl of cereal or your vitamin C in the morning a breeze. Down below you're gonna notice that shelf is notched so you can put the uh, occasional bottle of wine or a two liter that you want standing up instead of laying down in that little area there. And down below you've got vegetable bins. Okay, over here we've got slide out pantry and you can customize this. These shelves do move. You can go high and you can even keep some goods, canned goods or box goods stationary underneath. Same thing below. Okay, these shelves move. And it's got a carpeted bottom, so should a can drop, it's gonna soften its fall and probably soften the sound it would make as well. There's a carpeted cabinet next to the stove and cooktop. Over here we've got hood lights in the, in the range hood, as well as hood fan. Okay, we've got a spice rack and knife block. And a hinge lid here over this cooktop. And let's light the stove here for you, or stove top for you. Just hit it in the light. Turn your knob on light. And turn your knob on light. Got three nice blue flames there, very few impurities. Okay, it's a great cooktop. Spacing is great, okay? You can get some decent sized uh, cookware up here if you need to, okay? There's your oven, okay? And there's a compartment below. You can keep pots, pans, lids in there if you want. You can get some small ones in there. Of course, compartment overhead too. Alrighty. We've got a microwave here. This is great at making popcorn it's got its own popcorn button and uh, also I don't know of any other better way to make baked potatoes uh, unless you got 55 minutes that you don't know what to do with okay above we got a good cereal closet there or you can even put a shelf unit in there and stack your canned goods or, or I would probably do box goods at that height you could uh, stack your macaroni and stuff up there if you wanted to up and out of the way and this L galley is, is open. There's no banister here, so if you wanted to, and we did, we had a nice Breville conventional toaster oven here, which uh, I like to reheat my food conventionally. Uh, in that regard, I'm not a big fan of the microwave. So uh, we had the uh, toaster oven here, make our toast, reheat stuff, even, uh, even made a pie. So if you want to use electric versus blowing through a lot of propane to cook, then uh, you've got the... Uh, Certainly an electric toaster oven option. Plenty of room here. Or you could put a wine cooler here, or you could even put an extra extra cooler here on the counter there to supplement your fridge space. Okay, keep your goods uh, from perishing. Down here you're going to notice the uh, switch for the hot water tank. We have a 10-gallon, I believe it's a Suburban, 
10 gallon gas and electric so it goes either way um, it seems to run better on propane but you've got the electric option say you're trying to save your propane and down here you got the louver you got the in fresh air intake for the furnace so you don't want to put anything down here as far as garbage cans or anything like that you want to leave that area obstruction free so you get good airflow in okay down below you got you got pass-through storage underneath the sink basins okay and again the other side would be your access to your soap dispensers and you got plenty of silverware and cutlery drawers here you got four down and on this side you got three down okay Alrighty, I think that covers that. Uh, I don't know if we want to went through the panel. Got the uh, water pump here. Okay, water pump's running right now, but there's nothing in that tank. Uh, we didn't. We're not doing the holding of fresh water. We just did the site camping, so we have water supply, obviously. So, and then the monitor. We've got battery condition is fully charged. Fresh water. That fresh water supply tank is empty. And we have water in the galley, we have water in the bath holding, and gray water, and then we've got water in the uh, black tank as well. Uh, I can assure you this current uh, readout does not involve any bodily functions. We, uh, have, not, we have not done any hair washing or any, um, any bathroom usage or any dish washing. These, this is all right now water from cleaning the unit up and... Um, demoing the toilet which i'll get to uh, when we get to the front of the coach we did overhaul and rebuild the unit there um, so we've got a lot of water demo we've got water in the tanks but again it's not from natural causes okay again this folds down out of the way hood light off and again i got outlets on the end of the galley and in the in the corner of the galley i don't know if i showed you this cabinet plenty of Plate storage, pots and pans down below. Keep them, keep the heavy stuff down low if it's ever going to shift. Okay, moving to the front of the coach. I'm going to show you the sliding pocket door here. This is a solid. Well, I'm going to say hollow door, but it's it's not an accordion door. Let's put it that way. It's got a decent weight to it. Great privacy and sound barrier for, from the front and the rear of the coach. Okay, and it's got the tether strap here. Sometimes you pull up on site, you're not leveled off yet. You don't want to pinch any fingers, so keep that strap if you want to keep it strapped if you want to open. Down here on the first step, you're going to notice it's a compartment and it has the accessories to the uh, hoses and accessories to the um, central vac. Okay? So you can leave the vacuum at home and uh, it's all there. The bags and the power unit and the bag changing would be done in this front side compartment uh, by, on the patio side. Okay, and in here we have a extendable hook tool so you can hook the loop on your awning and pull it down. And we also have a red plastic key here. Okay, and this goes into the battery disconnect. So you can turn your 12 volt system on if you're not hooked up to shore power so you can at least get your lighting going and turn it off if you're on shore power or campground power okay got one step up in here here to the uh, bath platform and basically you got your residential style not even style it's a residential vanity faucet here okay it's got pivoting goose neck and this is an oil rub bronze finish faucet okay it's a poly basin. Down below you got your storage. You can keep your, you can keep your uh, tank chemicals down here, cleaning supplies. Uh, that is carpeted. And we got a hose here, an extra hose to the shower head assembly. Actually, that's the hose that came with the unit. Uh, that's a vinyl hose. It's kind of rigid. I didn't like it, and it's also short. So I went ahead and, in addition to the new shower bath and shower faucet, uh, with diverter, uh, I went ahead and bought a, a metal, more of a metal sheathed hose that's more flexible and a lot longer, so you can reach uh, the taller RV goers. Okay, and you could even reach out here if you had to uh, 
fill a bucket or again I I ordered a uh, bath type faucet with diverter so let's say you come in from a day at the beach or you're down at the lake and only your lower half got dirty from like the thigh down you can go ahead and rinse your legs off without having to take a full shower and of course the wand would work well in that capacity too uh, if you wanted to fill a bucket let's say you're going to wash the exterior of the unit or even wash your car on site uh, because as we all know the, the dust does build up from the camp camp roads service roads uh, it's a good place to fill a bucket or uh, rinse out a cooler if you had to okay all right and it's a positive detent on that door and there's also a pivot pin here so when you're in transit let's go to the water closet okay in here you're going to find a we'll start with a vent which is important and power vent okay Got a little medicine cabinet here for supplies extra toilet paper does fit in there magazine rack and this is a thetford aurora okay uh, in the spring we had a bit of a uh, leak at the at the valve assembly so I was contemplating whether replacing the unit altogether or just replacing the valve. So I priced out newer uh, RV stools and uh, I saw a lot of plastic type stuff for $150, $200. Uh, for a little bit more I saw some porcelain, um, high, high stools, porcelain style with a very high uh, foot flush, which I did not like that design. I think those stalks could in time break off and uh, they're not real easy to use this here is foot flush these pedals bottom out on the floor this is your fill that fills the bowl keep the bowl fresh and the pedal to the left there is the flush and rinse okay so again fill these pedals bottom against the floor so you're not going to hyper extend those pedals you're not going to break them so that's why when I took this unit out and I was contemplating re repairing it or replacing it, I realized that this is a porcelain toilet. It's uh, almost as heavy as some residential units uh, without the tank, we'll say, to be fair. But uh, it's a porcelain unit. So I had, in no circumstances, wanted to replace that with something that was all plastic. Of course, the seat and lid are poly, but the rest of this unit is porcelain. Okay, it's a good unit. Unlike a residential style stool, there's a lot of piping in here. There's there's a uh, fresh water supply, there's vent tubes, there's um, there's a uh, rin rinse ring tube in there. So there's a lot of tubing in there. I replaced it all in the clamps. So there'd be no problems with this stool. Okay, it's like brand new, ready to rock and roll. That being said, uh, that is why we have a lot of water in the black holding tank. Again, there's no bodily functions took place in here since we've had it in the driveway so we took it off site months ago and we've uh we've, you know made the made the determination that we're going to sell it late in the season but uh you're going to catch a deal on this unit if you're going to buy it this fall and uh get in it take it down to florida or just park it in your driveway not mine or you're going to probably pay a little bit more for this unit if i'm going to sit on it till spring so we'll keep that in mind but uh good deal on this residential style unit RV that is okay we've got dual lights in here so if you're gonna read if you're one of those and uh, go down to one light or just daylight for a little more subdued experience we got a uh, twin switch panel here this is 12 volt panel and that's gonna control your hall light as well as your bath bath uh, water closet light rather and here, uh, for comparison, on the left, you're going to see an 1156 uh, RV-style incandescent bulb. And on the right is the same 1156 uh, lead chip bulb. One obviously shows, sheds more light and is cooler to the touch and uses less power. So we like the lead bulbs. Um, they're starting to refine them more and more. And I think someday you're not going to see uh, the hot incandescence, on, particularly an RV. They're, um, again, night and day difference here. You're going to notice the sconce lighting panel lights here inside the bed bedroom. This is a queen-size bed. You've got uh, lead chip bulbs in here, and you've got incandescents over there, just to kind of show you the difference. So, all right. 
we got nightstands. These are uh, mounted to the to the framework of the slide. So these come in with a bed unit. And you can put your drink there, or if you don't want it to spill while you're sleeping, you can put it inside the cavity there. A little compartment. There's one on the other side as well. We've got a full-size closet that runs the full width of the coach. Light overhead for your ball caps, hats, accessories. Here we got two pads, okay? These are ceiling vent pads. Okay, these are insulator pads. You can press these into the cavity of the roof vents. Uh, you can do the one in the rear of the coach. You could also do the one here in the bedroom uh, for those windy, drafty, or damp, damp days. And that'll uh, give you a little extra barrier, okay, for insulation. We've got light underneath here, okay. We got six generous drawers down below, okay. And we got uh, yeah, pr pretty much this could be set up easily as his and hers. Uh, we, her and I shared uh, the six drawers down below. I had these two and she had those two. And then of course she had the top and I had the bottom one there. And then you got your own separate overhead wardrobes here. These mirrored, de decorative mirrored cabinets. Uh, in this one here, you're going to notice a winder for the rooftop antenna. Okay, that'll help your TV signal. Uh, the antenna goes up fine on the crank, and it's got the directional rotation for up and down. Uh, when, you, when you tear down camp, you're probably going to need somebody up on the roof to gently coax the antenna down until the winder grabs it. For some reason, it'll go up fine. It does not come down on its own without a little nudge, and that probably is just enough to get the cable to start winding around the drum. Uh, you don't want to force it in any circumstance. In here, you're going to notice a piece of wood stock, and this was put here uh, as an anchor. We've got, um, we had the upper bracket for the um, awning, the upper uh, bracket assembly there that had lag bolts that pretty much over time, the, the threads on those bolts rust, and those bolts no longer grab the wood and are no longer secure. So you pretty much run the risk of having part of your awning or all of it fly off and leave the coach. So in, in uh, larger bolts with bigger threads was not an option. Over time, the wood gets a little soft around those threads where they, uh, they get moist. So we went ahead and put in a piece of timber here and longer lag bolts, and now that bracket is more than secure. And we've also run longer bolts for the awning rail as well because uh, again you get an updraft underneath that awning and an older coach you could probably see that awning just decide you know just rip rip the rail right off the coach especially if you got older hardware in there so that's been taken care of uh, we even continued on here so this end of the coach that awning is very secure the other end we did not have that problem Okay, so, and in this void here, you're probably going to put a television set in here. Uh, kind of hard to find that dimension, so you could easily notch the cabinet and probably wedge in uh, a shorter but rectangular set that will fill that, that cavity for you. And this hole here is to pass through your power cord, which plugs in here. And, of course, you got your cable access there. All right, this uh, queen-size bed, it does lift up. Um, and FYI, there is a uh, there's a newer. Uh, it's actually well, it's actually one year one years old. Is a uh, nine inch memory foam mattress, which is a it's just a joy to sleep on. Um, and if you toss and turn, or if uh, your partner tosses and turns at night, you don't get a lot of uh, waves. So it's a great great mattress. Uh, it's got pr uh, protective uh, covering on it as well. So it's uh, it's fresh okay and so underneath you do have storage you could put extra comforter sheets blankets pillow shams underneath there that is not a full full storage bed pedestal unfortunately uh, this unit here for whatever reason they put in the power unit uh, in the bed cavity so the first two-thirds of that pedestal is occupied with the unit um, there's a panel that lifts up to access that unit you certainly could put some some goodies, some small goodies in there that won't interfere with the operation of the hydraulic ram 
but stuff you want to keep um, pretty much out of uh, out of sight. So you could actually keep that keep goods there that you don't want discovered. And by that I mean just uh, you know little people or uh, you know some valuables you can keep in there. Or you can always bolt uh, a metal lock box to the floor somewhere. I mean, there's plenty of places to do it. So if you got valuables, um, you got options. Okay. So overhead here, you have a uh, power vent. This is thermostatically controlled. Okay. You can set it on. You know, you could set it to to activate in just cooler weather, or you can just dial it in there to to turn on if it's going to reach a certain temperature or be certain. Obviously, there's no temperature graduation on that. There's more of a color graduation, but you get the hint. If you want to come in and it's war it feels warm in here, you just turn this dial to the point where the fan will come on, and then the fan will go off once it, once it cools down the uh, bedroom area a little bit. Okay, so that's a uh, vent lid, power vent, reversible, and three-speed. Keep it on exhaust. Don't put it in reverse and draw air in. You're likely on even a non-windy day to catch or draw in uh, fumes from your holding tank vent which vents through the roof and is approximately five six feet away from this vent so use this vent as exhaust only you can keep your side windows open and when the vent is exhausting it's going to draw cooler air in and give you a convection effect so just thought i'd point that out uh, we got two speakers here in the master and in the speaker grill i just didn't want to drill a hole in the ceiling which is a padded a padded white ceiling this is uh, great for sound deadening and great insulation but i did not want to drill to put in a smoke detector so i just used the grill of the speaker so that's a supplemental smoke detector hey if you're if you're heavy sleepers which uh which she was and i and i i'm a light sleeper but uh, if you're a heavy sleeper you can want a smoke detector Maybe right over your head. Who knows? Okay. The moose, unfortunately, do not come with a coach. They're going with me. Uh, here we've got the third fire extinguisher. I don't know if I pointed out the other two. We've got one at the entry to punch your way in if you discovered a fire in the unit. And then one down there at the edge of the, um, at the, end of the dinette slide that you could flank the kitchen with or cover any situation you have there with maybe electrical equipment let's hope not but um, again the units come with one extinguisher one fire extinguisher uh, one one smoke detector and I don't think that's enough in a coach this size it just was maybe enough to satisfy standards back then when the coach was made okay uh, let's go on to the washer dryer closet if you're going to be full timers uh, you certainly want a washer and dryer unless there's a uh, access to plenty of washers and dryers at the camp office or camp utilities building which uh, a lot of people find out that once they bring their their unmentionables down to the uh, laundry they find out that they're in line behind one or if not maybe two other people waiting for the same machines and that's before you put two dollars worth of coins inside the machine so if you're going to be on extended uh extended seasonal camping or full timing it's great it's almost imperative to have your own washer and dryer uh, some of these units now are coming through with the, the washer dryer combo which is a very small drum you're obviously uh, sacrificing obviously drum space because when that drum rings out it also will cycle as a dryer and that is long and tedious uh, that'd be certainly adequate and better than nothing if you were just a weekender but again, if uh, RVing is a lifestyle for you, or you do some full timing on site, you know why should you have to bundle up your um, dirty clothes and take them down to a camp office and wait in line? So, uh, with a 50 amp service in this unit, you can run washer and dryer simultaneous and get your laundry done and get back to what you were doing in the first place was enjoying your time off or enjoying your recreation. Okay. Alrighty, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, that's a triple globe, 12 volt, uh, 12 volt globe bulbs. I don't know if I pointed out the uh, the privacy skylight in the shower here. It gives you a little daylight when you're waking up, showering in the morning, 
and uh, gives you privacy too in case uh, there are tears in your campground um, you'd be surprised sometimes uh, other campsites look down on others okay uh, I think that covers it folks uh, don't want to get to the point where I'm long-winded on this but I just didn't want to miss anything out and this is a virtual tour so this is almost as good as being here um, I will say the AC uh, AC operates the the fan motor operates the compressor motors operating this past season we lost uh, Cooling so I've been up. I've been up on the roof. I've checked the unit out uh, Without a sniffer and I don't see any traces of refrigerant oil leakage, but I do know that compressor is cycling so somewhere uh, Refrigerant has exhausted. I believe that's r22 um, They don't make these units serviceable they do, however, make bullet valves, which will puncture the line, and you could have it serviced with R22, which is, they're starting to do a phase out on it, or you can have the unit fully evacuated of any remnant refrigerant, and then you can have an updated uh, common use refrigerant put in its place. So there are some, some newer refrigerants that will work um, in this capacity. So again, this unit may need refrigerant, or you go ahead and do a full replacement, but I assure you the unit works. It is in need of refrigerant and um, is not serviceable unless you install a bullet piercing valve, which then gives you a, a fitting port to uh, evacuate and refill the system. Okay, well, thanks for joining us on this video tour. My name's Glenn, and if you have any questions, uh, you will know how to get get in touch with me uh, where I place the video and uh, we're also going to do a video of the L-shaped sectional so you can get an idea and we're going to do an exterior video tour as well. Thank you.